I woke up slowly, digesting what I had seen. I was lying in bed, I felt young, and there was someone in bed with me. Memory seeped into my consciousness. I smiled at the thought, it was the morning after my wedding. Lying next to me was my newlywed wife, Sherry. I looked over her pale skin, put a finger to her neck, and smiled even wider. I reached for the phone. Twenty years earlier, I reached for the phone. The shrill ringing woke me from a light slumber. I glanced at the caller ID and whined. I knew what was waiting for me. I picked up the receiver. Hello, I lied, you're late again. Yes, my ex-bitch wife, I harbored a vague hope that it might be one of my two sons, unlikely, they hated me more than they hated their mother, as if such a thing were possible. I'm two days late, it's not an emergency for you, and we both know it. I don't care, she shrieked, you're going to pay me that measly 200 a month whether you like it or not. You've got plenty of it, why don't you and Vin just get married and leave me alone? I felt hot, even though I knew what was coming next. None of your damn business what Stuart and I do. Learn how to pronounce his name for a change, you dog. I know how to pronounce your names, Scary Sherry and Stuart Screwdriver. I realized the complete lack of a decent rhyme. I just enjoyed steaming it up. Just send the damn money now, she shouted and hung up loudly, obviously a landline with a receiver. I stared at my iPhone, pondering very briefly why Steve Jobs hadn't foreseen the need for such an app for his signature creation. Then I looked at my surroundings. I lived in a small, and I mean small, condo, two-bedroom, one-bath, purchased before I met Scary Sherry and thus not a marital asset, and the stairs were my only source of exercise. Not a bad place to live, but at this stage of my life and career, I should have lived much better. I sat down in my chair, a shabby but reliable souvenir of my bachelorhood days, threw my head back, and started a little pity party. I'd been a dropout for three years when I met Sherry. Bachelor's degree in accounting, good job, nice apartment, saving money left and right, about to take the CPA exam. Life wasn't just good, it was wonderful. Then I met Sherry. In retrospect, I can say she was hard on herself, she pursued me with righteous fire. She was going to get on my damn train. So there you go, a year later we were married and expecting a baby. No, she didn't get pregnant until after the wedding, unless babies take 15 months to carry. We were doing well, I thought, until our first child was born, and then the drumbeat began, new house, new house, house, new house, new house, new car, new car, new car, new. Well, you get the picture. After a couple of years, I obeyed most of her promises, and we had another baby boy. There were few waves throughout the years of the kids' lives. When they moved on to middle school, things changed. I didn't notice anything, of course, but not everyone was aware. Dawn and Sheila, mutual friends, tried to drop hints. Phil and Susan, another close friend, bluntly told me so. I was being cheated on. I've been cheated on, cuckolds. I brushed it all off, but as the days, weeks, and months passed, I began to realize that our friends were right, something was happening. Just after our 17th anniversary, an event marked by a chilly relationship and a lack of warmth, she announced to me that she had fallen in love with someone else. Dawn and Sheila scolded me outright, Phil and Susan not so much, but still angry at both of us. Scary Sherry slapped me with a restraining order and served me with divorce papers, then moved her lover in with her. It all happened so fast, I didn't have time to realize anything, not in the moment. The judge treated me with great sympathy. She questioned Scary Sherry and Stuart the screwdriver, that's what I started calling them about their extramarital affairs. They smugly accused me of everything in the world. Judge Kozar shredded their arguments and, while she acknowledged that I would have to pay the mortgage on the house and child support for the children, who everyone thought were mine, her words elicited a barrage of swearing from Scary Sherry, for which she got three days for contempt of court. I would have to pay my beloved ex $200 a month in child support. More swearing, another three days for contempt of court, and so life went on. I sat in that comfy chair and felt sorry for myself, and then everything went white. I thought I was dead. I felt no pain, no transition, I just sat there, and everything around me was white, no, make that clear, colorless, not transparent, just. 
Nothing. So this is death, I thought. I looked around, saw nothing, and enjoying the seat, just... Well, sat. Soon a figure approached me, nothing distinguishable, just a figure. Tired of this? I heard myself say. I nodded. A hand reached toward me, holding out a vial. I took it, there was one pill in it. That's all she needs, came a voice. Twenty years earlier, I woke up in the honeymoon suite again. There was water running in the bathroom. I remembered Sherry had taken a bath alone before introducing herself to me. We'd never had sex, I'd honored her wish to initiate introductions on our wedding night, and she declared her desire to present herself clean in front of her husband. I looked at the nightstand, there was a vial with a single pill in it. I pondered for a microsecond before pulling out the pill. As I remembered, we toasted each other with a small shot of, you guessed it, sherry. I dropped the pill into her glass, it disappeared immediately. Finally, it reappeared. We had a glass of sherry each, and then went through all the twists and turns of the wedding night. We fell into a deep slumber. I woke slowly, not quite sure if I was dreaming. Then my senses turned on. Next to me lay my newlywed wife, Sherry. I looked over her pale skin, put a finger to her neck, and smiled even wider. I reached for the phone. Please hurry, my wife isn't moving. I gave more information, and then leaned back in my chair. I grinned and got dressed. I needed to find a new wife.